Hi everyone, this is Josh Kulp. We are learning Daf Shui, Masechet Gitin, Daf Tetvav. Uh, and congratulations, we're starting the second chapter of Masechet Gitin. Unless you were concerned that we're putting the topic, our favorite topic, down, we are not. We are continuing with the famous declaration, Befanai Nichtav, U Befanai Nichtam, uh, that the get was written in my presence and the get was signed in my presence. Uh, and the Mishnah goes through a whole bunch of scenarios where uh, a person can, one person cannot make the entire declaration. Uh, they can either say half of the declaration, or there are one person on one half and two on another half, but we don't have one person that can make the entire declaration. We're going to continue to talk about that for quite a while. But I wanted to go over some kind of a line here that I think is interesting that comes up in the very beginning of the sugya where Rav Chista says, even if two testify about the second signature, it's still possible. It's still disqualified. Uh, Rav Chista is referring to a situation where uh, someone says, uh, half of it, uh, all, it was written in front of me and one signature occurred in front of me. And Rav Chista says, now look, what if we have two, two testimonies, two uh, witnesses about the second signature? Usually the way to uphold uh, the validity of a signature on any document is to get somebody to testify that they recognize that handwriting and it is who they say it is. Um, and Rav Chista says that even if we have one person who makes the whole de the declaration about the about the right about the writing and makes half the declaration about the signing and we get two others that make the declaration of the signing, uh, that's not enough. And the Gemara asks why, and the answer is O kulam bekiyum haget O kula kulo betakanat chachamim. Either we follow the rules of uh, establishing a document, validifying, uh, validating a document, uh, and that usually entails somebody come and testif come, coming and testifying about the signatures, either the sign signees themselves or somebody else who recognizes their handwriting, or we have this special takanat chachamim, special enactment of the sages that in order to facilitate the delivery of a get, which is necessary at a lot of times to prevent the woman from becoming an aguna, a woman who cannot get remarried when she should be able to do so, uh, the rabbis made a takana, an enactment, to, uh, to allow one person to bring it and testify the whole thing. But you can't mix and match. And I think that's important over here. That to, uh, it keeps coming up throughout this sugya to maintain the integrity of those two systems. We have one system that is normal for upholding documents and another system that's normal for the get. And you can't mix and match because otherwise people will get confused uh, and maybe they'll come to be lenient in terms of upholding documents, general documents, monetary documents, and that's not something to be desired. Uh, the Gemara seems to want people to remember, or want the halacha to remember, judges to remember, that this is a special system that works only for gitin and doesn't work for any other case of, uh, of Jewish law. So um, despite the fact that there are some difficulties against Rav Chista, that ends up remaining that principle that either you follow uh, upholding a, a document in general, or you follow the uh, establishment, the takana, the enactment of the, of the chachami, of the sages, but you can't mix and match between the two of them.